I find this to be a bit of a kind of trick question. Um, there are lots of ways to think about it. We could plug in values for T and D and kind of start to think about how this object actually moves. But I think the easiest way to handle this is to recognize that basically what we have is a line. Uh, and lines on the SAT are very, very common, and they pretty much always take the form of Y equals M X plus B. So we have a Y coordinate, which is our D, our X coordinate, which is T, and then M represents the slope of the line, and that's what this 16 is. Now you may notice that there's no B. B would be the Y intercept. We've seen that in some other questions already in this section, but there isn't one. It just happens, and sometimes that's okay. That just means that the, the starting value is zero, and it kind of makes sense with this story because we're just tracking how far the object moves since it starts moving, and so it when it hasn't moved at all, it hasn't moved at all. So there's no distance that it's covered. So it makes sense that the initial value there would be zero. Regardless, we're looking for an answer choice that represents a slope, which when we have a story often sounds like a rate. So we wanna kinda have like something per something. That's usually how this goes. So if we look at A, that's gonna just be a total distance, right? So that's kind of like a Y coordinate. It doesn't have any sort of change involved. It is just a set distance. But the way that this thing is described, it's it, there isn't a set distance that this thing moves. It's constantly moving. As soon as we've set it in motion, every second it's gonna move some more. And so this just doesn't make sense. I'm gonna skip choice B for now because I think that's kind of annoying. But let's look at C and D, which conveniently use the word rate. And so if you were between these two, because you're like, ah, oh, that, that looks like a slope, well then hopefully you would pick C, which is the answer, because 16 is the slope, and it's the uh, the number that's there. This is question 7 out of 22, so we shouldn't expect a lot of shenanigans with the SAT tricking us at this point, so the straightforward answer is the correct answer. Now, the reason that it's C and not D, if we think about the, the way that this line is constructed, is that when we do slope, you may have learned this formula in school already, but y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2 is our way of calculating the slope between any two points. Now notice the y is on the top. That's kind of counterintuitive, and that's why I don't like this formula, is a lot of people mess it up because they, they kind of think x should be on the top because it comes first in the alphabet. But what this really tells us in this case is that the change in the y is divided by the change in the x. So the y unit is going to be on top. And the way that we have this equation set up, D is the Y coordinate, the Y unit. So that's the distance. And so the distance is measured in inches. So it's the change in the inches. And then the change in X, X in this case is T, T is the number of seconds. So we want our rate to be in that form, inches per second. Now I know that both C and D kind of hit that, but more importantly, it hits it in a way that keeps the 16 on top, right? There, there, if we wanted to, we can always put um, make a, a number into a fraction by just putting it over one. And so if we do that here, we can kind of see that it makes much more sense for the 16 to be on top because that's the way it's written in this equation. Um, basically, and I'll just write it down here, if D is equal to 16T, another way to think of that is D is equal to 16 over one. T. And so by picking choice C, we're preserving that the one is on the bottom. Choice D would be flipping it. And I could see on a harder question later in the section that might be required because the way that they ask the question might force us to rearrange the equation. But again, this is number seven. It's supposed to be easy. The one thing that really bothers me actually about this is getting back to choice B, which is a bit of a trap because that answer is true, unless I'm misreading something here. The object move a total of 16 T inches, right? So let's say two seconds go by, right? T is two. What we would do with that T is we would plug that into the equation. So two is T and that would be multiplied by 16 and that would get us a value of 32, two times 16. So in a way, choice B is correct. It, it is true that no matter what value we plug in for T, the value is going to be, or the total distance will be 16 times that number, times the value of T that we make up. So B is kind of true, but it's not what they're asking, right? They're not asking for the value of 16 T. They're not asking for what D represents. They're just asking plain old, what is that 16? That's the kind of sneakiness that bothers me because it's the kind of thing that if you actually know what you're doing, with this equation, you might pick that answer because you'd be like, oh, 
that's just true. That That is exactly what that means. And then because you're so confident that you found the right answer, you might not read choices C and D. And this is a, a classic SAT move. They make a kind of like trap answer be A or B, knowing that some people are going to be too lazy or too excited and they won't continue reading the other answer choices. And so they could have saved those points if they just read on and were like, oh, I, you know, C is also true, but it's, you know, that's what they're asking for. But we stop short because we're so excited we found something. And no matter what we're doing on an SAT or a PSAT, we can never stop short. We have to look at every answer. We might not always need to test every answer out in a full way, but we listen to see it and look at it and internalize it. So that's reading and math, all modules, we always need to be able to look at all four answer choices so we don't accidentally fall for these traps. It's a very common move that they make, so you got to prepare for it. Don't shortcut yourself those one, two seconds. It's not worth it for losing the 10 points of the question.